Tony, you think that street photography should be banned? I've done a lot of street photography, but after careful consideration, I think the laws should be changed to protect the privacy of people. And I know that's not going to be a popular opinion. In fact, I can't find anybody else in the whole photography community who's willing to take this stance. Everybody says protect street photography. But I'm going to try to make an argument and help people can be open-minded about well, it. Well, I think it's more important now than it has ever been in history. So I'm going to make an argument about it as well. But first, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Squarespace, for making this video possible. If you're looking for a platform to highlight your photos, uh, to appeal to your clients so they can see your best work, where you can schedule your appointments with your clients, or even have an a members only area for them to see their photos, you should really consider getting your own Squarespace website or portfolio. You can get a free trial for 14 days and when you're ready to go live, use the coupon code TONY to get 10% off after you go to squarespace.com slash TONY. So thanks Squarespace. Thank you. First up, this comes via Petapixel, an article written on Petapixel by Brandon Balwick, and he was defending street photography, but he was citing an article written by Jean Sun, a woman in New York who has been, over the course of her life, repeatedly sort of harassed and photographed by photographers on her own account um, while she's just walking down the street. And as I look into it, there's an awful history of the laws protecting street photography, which in the United States is rooted in the First Amendment, the yeah. right to free speech. For example, you can li literally legally take upskirt photos, and this has been tested in the courts multiple times, and the courts have decided, yes, this guy who took upskirt photos, this guy who followed women around a store and just took pictures of their chest and butt, that's, that's legal. Okay. It's, not only, it's okay for you to take the pictures, it's also okay for you to share them, put them online. Okay, I think this is a slippery slope argument. I don't agree with what they're doing. I don't think you should be taking pictures of women's chests and following them. In fact, that sounds like harassment to me and is completely separated from the art of street photography. He wasn't going out as a street photographer to participate in the art and culture of street photography. He's a creep with a camera and he's using the laws to protect his creepiness. And so banning an entire art form because of one creep would be like banning speaking in public because I've had men yell at me in the streets and say disgusting things. Well, first of all, we always have to give something up to get something. Like this is not an area of black and white. I cannot yeah. make an argument that there would be absolutely no compromise. But what I'm saying is I think in 2020 when you consider the diminishing value and honestly the diminishing honesty of street photography, the value of street photography is now outweighed by the abuse surrounding the laws. I think there is still plenty of legitimate street photography, and I wish we could find a way to have that continue, but I don't think there is a good way to do it. Let me talk a little bit about the existing laws. Okay. In many countries, street photography is simply illegal. Like, it's basically illegal in Germany. You can't just go take pictures of people without their consent. How is that possible? Everyone's taking pictures constantly, all of the time, everywhere. Okay, well that's true, but you really can't take pictures generally in public spaces in Germany. It's illegal, and it's illegal in other places too. So this is not something that we can take for granted. Even in the United States, there are many restrictions on how you can take and use pictures of people in public. If somebody's filming a TV show, you can't just have strangers walking through the background. Every person you see in the background has signed a release form. They've probably been paid for just walking through the background. It is illegal to use pictures of people any sort of commercial use. But you can still post them privately. You can use them privately. You can share them and even sell them as fine art. So you can make money from it, but you cannot use them commercially. So already the, the laws are sort of restrictive around street photography. It's not like you can just go do anything. But we have this term, a reasonable expectation of privacy. So you can't take a telephoto lens and photograph somebody through their bathroom window in their bathroom because Why? there they have an I'm expectation of privacy. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I would argue we have an expectation of privacy in public spaces too. Many of us travel through public spaces to get to work. We're not out just having leisure. We're not always feeling like we want to be photographed. Children have to go through public spaces to get to their schools. 
Why is it legal to take pictures of those children without their consent, without their parents' consent? It is legal to do that and share those pictures and even sell those pictures as fine art. And I think that's kind of absurd. I think when you get to the point of selling the photo, that's different because that feels more exploitative to me and I think you should have permission at that point. Um, but I don't see any problem with taking a picture of somebody with a reasonable amount of respect for that person. Upskirts is different. You put on a skirt and it's intended to cover this much of your body. If someone is putting a camera at a strategic angle to see up your skirt, then I think even just looking up someone's skirt is a violation of privacy, even if you're not taking a picture. But that's not illegal. Is looking at someone illegal? Because when I go out in public, I expect that people will see me, but I don't expect that they'll follow me around and stare at me or try to look up my skirt. And so I think that there's this huge gray area. Of course, it's terrible to take an upskirt photo, but that's not normal. Okay, well, we agree that the laws should change, but perhaps we're disagreeing about exactly where these laws should Where be do we draw the line? Um, let me say that when I search for this, I find a lot of articles discussing the ethics of street photography. Yeah. And that's nice, but it's very soft because when you talk about people following ethics, you put the onus on each individual person. And ethical people will do ethical things. We had conversations about people who wanted to take a picture but didn't feel right because they would seem creepy. Okay, that person's an ethical person. But we also have a large group of humans who are not ethical people. And it's those people that we make the laws for. We don't need laws against murder. I would never murder somebody. I'm an ethical person. I don't yeah. need a law against murder. Sure. But we have laws against murder because other people would kill somebody. We need laws against taking pictures of people in public without their consent for private use, not for photojournalism. We need laws against that because people abuse that law, actively abuse it. What are the negative consequences most of the time? Like, okay, maybe I'm having a bad hair day. I don't want someone to take my picture. They do then they share it on their Instagram. Like, honestly, it, like what's the worst thing that's gonna happen anyway? Well, it can be humiliating to you and your family. I mean, have you seen, what is it, like the people of Walmart? Yeah. Where people just take pictures of people and then humiliate them and make fun of them, like, and, and also profit from it. That's like, actually, why is that okay? That's actually a really good point. And I think that that goes into a different category. I think that's like a means to bullying. It's not really street photography. That's like using photography to exploit someone or make fun of them or harass them even. Is the intention of street photography to harass people or make fun of them? Well, it's all bundled under the same set of laws. Okay, but it's not the art. So you can't say you, you can ban street photography and then put all this horrible stuff under that umbrella. You can't restrict everyone because there are a few outliers that are horrible. Yeah, you can. We do it all the time. We, like, I personally, I don't care if people smoke in bars because yeah. I have no sense of smell. It does not bother me. And in fact, I think the smoke photograph's kind of cool. But other people don't like it. I'm not exposed to it enough to get secondhand cancer, but other people might be. Yeah. Thus, I wouldn't care if it was legal, but it does impact some people, and thus we outlaw it for everyone. We could just say, eh, generally, don't smoke that much in bars. It bothers other people but we don't do that. Instead, we put a hard law in place because too many people abuse that right. But it's not banned because it smells bad. It's banned because it's been shown to cause health issues in other people. Well, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into this, but first a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you think street photography is okay or not, you're probably taking pictures and want a place to share them. Now, you may have an Instagram or some other social media, but that's just sharing things chronologically, not your best photos put forward, but just whatever you shot last. So why not try Squarespace and find a place to put your photos that looks professional and clean and beautiful, and you can try it out for 14 days for free. And if you decide you want your website to go live, uh, you can use the coupon code TONY to get 10% off. Go to squarespace.com slash TONY, try it out, let us know what you think, and thanks Squarespace for making this possible. Thanks Squarespace. Okay, the value of street photography. This is something that I wanted to talk about because I do see the negative aspects. I definitely don't want anyone being a creep. I've heard stories about street photographers that jump in front of people to kind of scare them and get a reaction out of them. 
And I think or that's... fire a flash. These are very common techniques in street photography, the art of street photography. Yeah. Upsetting people and then being like, oh, look how surprised they are. Yeah. Well, I definitely think that some of those practices are, I think some of them are just rude. You know, there are people that do things rude in public all the time that aren't illegal, like spitting on the street. I hate that. It's not illegal, and I don't think it should be. Um, but I think the value of street photography is so huge that I would hate to see that light put out by the by the few people that are just annoying or rude or disgusting or horrible. Okay, well show me how the value is greater than the cost. Okay, here, so the value historically, which I know that you see, is that we get this insight into our own humanity. Not only how people used to live, but what our world used to be like. What was the human experience like at the time? And I think that's not something you can get from all media. You could say like, oh, photojournalists already do that. Not true, because I think a lot of photojournalists have this motive to find the most sensational and dramatic moment, whereas street photography is often focused intentionally on the mundane. It's finding beauty in the usual. Um, that's super important, because one thing, I was going through all of these photos when I was researching this, and I was like almost moved to tears, especially by Fan Ho, who I'm showing a picture here because it's so clear that he finds so much beauty in humanity and he showed a part of the world, uh, he was from China, that I was not familiar with and it makes you fall in love with people. It makes you fall in love with the world. It makes you fall in love with culture. It connects you to people everywhere. It shows you that someone could be all the way across the globe and you see these children playing in a street photo and you think, Everyone loves their children. Everyone's walking to work. Everyone's doing their chores out in the street or living their lives. I felt a part of something when I looked at these photos and I realized it's bigger than any one individual that you may recognize in a photo because they're a symbol for something else. They're a symbol for all of us. It's not about violating any one person's privacy. It's about sharing our humanity. 1937 in China, if you want to see what that looked like, you would have to rely on street photographers because not that many people had cameras, not that many people had the skill set or the money in order to take pictures. So that's all we have historically. But nobody's going to be like, oh my God, how did people dress in 2020? There's a massive, unlimited amount of media. If you want pictures of kids playing in the street in 2020, the parents will take it. Or somebody, they'll even pay people to take pictures of their kids. They will get permission. You do not need pictures taken without consent in 2020 in order to document what life is like. So is any average person's photography going to be as good as notable street photographers? Why wouldn't it be? Why is it going to be better if it doesn't have consent? Don't Does we have the, better photos with consent? Could the average person take this photo? Well, lots of professional photographers could take that photo with consent. But people, That's all I'm saying is just get consent. Okay, this is my argument for it. You, we get pictures all of the time. We take thousands of pictures in a year, each person. There are influencers taking pictures at every historic monument, every well-known site that you could travel to. Everyone's getting family photos taken. They're, you're right. We won't ever question what people looked like in 2020 when they knew they were being photographed. But my, the value in street photography now is that you see real people real people and that's important every day we're being served images of people who are posing correctly in the right lighting with the best makeup on with their best clothing on acting the way that they want you to think they act instead of how they actually act and when i was looking at these street photos some of the modern ones this is jonathan higby uh, a street photographer that i really admire you might be wondering what's the value of this photo of this elderly woman with purple hair with a poodle and I will tell you that as a woman that gets served photos every single day of 60 year old women that look like they're my age of women with makeup on and ring lights and being perfect it's like we are constantly served an image of what we think humanity should be but what street photography does is it shows us what we actually are when we're walking down the street, when we don't think anyone's looking. And I look at a picture like this and I think, I would want to be this woman one day. I'm inspired by her. I want to have purple hair when I'm 80. I want to have a poodle in a little bag. I think she's super cool. Yeah. And Jonathan Higby took a good picture. And I don't know if he had consent or not, but I actually think he could have said, hey, can I take your picture? And she would have been happy to. Many street photographers do that, like the humans of New York. 
very famous street photography book. All of it is done with consent. The photographer talks to the person, gets their story, and then takes their picture, and they are real people. You can do this with consent. Yeah, but what's wrong with getting the candid photo first? What if he got this picture candidly and then said, hey, I think that you look really beautiful. Are you okay with me using this picture? You still get the candid street photography and then get consent afterwards. You have the person's approval and you have a candid view on life. I'm definitely better with them getting consent than with not having consent. But right now the laws don't require the consent part of it. She doesn't necessarily need to know that this picture even exists. But let me talk about the idea that street photography is candid or real. Because everything is still shot through the photographer's selective vision. They do not select random real people. This lady with the purple hair and the poodle is not a random real person. She is the most interesting person that the street photographer saw. If you took this to mean to be a normal person of New York in 2020, you would be incorrect. The average person is far less interesting than this lady because the photographer is selecting out subjects that they like. And so maybe she's not conventionally young and beautiful, but she's still interesting enough that that caught the photographer's eye and the picture then became popular and shared. Yeah, but then you're making the argument we don't need this photography because everyone's already documented, but that's not true. I am making that argument. I think it would be totally fine to take a picture of this woman and just say, can I take your picture, please? I think you can get consent afterwards and that would be a good compromise. You get the candidness of real street photography, the documentation of a candid, true moment, and then you can go to the person and say, can I use this? So what happens if you take the picture and you can't catch, catch them or they say no? Like, is it then illegal if you retain the photo? I think you shouldn't be able to sell it. So you'd be able to use it for personal purposes? Yeah. And you would, but that would not include things like upskirt photos. You would still want to draw the line. Of course, no one should ever be doing anything like that. But that is legal. Yeah, but that falls under something different. That's not street photography. That's voyeurism. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess you wouldn't call it street photography, even though it's still protected under the same First Amendment rights. But at the same time, I don't think the people who wrote the Constitution had that in mind that was not what they were trying to protect. It's also not protecting your right to document. It's a violation of someone else's privacy. Like I said, if you put a skirt on, then your intention is to cover the parts of your body that your skirt covers. If someone takes advantage of you in a moment where you're sitting on a stair and they can see up your skirt for a moment, like that's just a violation. That has nothing to do with the art of photography. I think we both agree that we have some expectation of some amount of privacy, even in public spaces. And I'll say it goes further than that. And I think every street photographer has their own boundaries. We don't agree on all of them, but I think that we can all agree on some extreme things. Like if you were to hide in the bushes with a telephoto lens, that's creepy. Definitely don't do that, right? But do you think that should be illegal? Yeah, because I think that's more like harassment. Oh, so I don't understand. Should street photography be legal if you can see the subject, or is it does it depend on the angle of view of the camera? Yeah, because I think that there's some kind of like agreed upon like knowledge. Like if the person can see you, then they at least have some idea of what's going on. Every time I've done street photography, like I kind of look at the person like, hey. They see my camera, they look at it. There's an unspoken agreement there. Okay, well now what you're saying is you're basically getting consent to take the picture, it's but that's not what street photography is. Street photography, you discuss it being candid, and by the time the person has nodded their head, it's no longer a candid moment. I won't say it's a full consent at this point, but the fact that they can see you gives some expectation for what's going on in the moment. That, but that many street photographers do not want the subjects to have any idea that they're taking the picture. They surprise them with the camera. They even pop a flash before they know what's happening. I think that's so different than using a really long telephoto lens or hiding or being generally weird. And in fact, like just take photography out of it. I, if I'm walking down the street and there's someone sitting on a bench and they're looking at every person going by, you know there are people watching and you're like, we do that. That's people watching. If I'm walking down the street and there's a guy in the bushes and I just see his eye peeking out, Maybe he's people watching, but that's some weird violation. Like there's a line that we secretly agree on as humans, but I can't fully suss out what it is, but it's definitely there. I think I'm willing to give a little bit of ground up here. I think I'd be okay with taking pictures of people without their previous consent, as long as you immediately acquire consent after. 
And if not, then you are forced to delete the picture, whether you are unable to get consent or whether they say no. Okay, so I was curious about how the average person, non-photographers, feel about this. So I went on my social media and I asked a non-photography group of people, would you be okay with it? My question was, would you be okay with someone taking your picture in public? I didn't even specify like professional photographer or anything like that. And I had like 40 answers or something, and most people said, yeah, I'm fine with it as long as they ask me, actually. A lot of people said like, yeah, I'm just fine with it either way. Like, who cares? Um, a lot of people said, I'm fine with it as long as they tell me what they're doing. And I even asked them, like, what if they, they get your consent after they take your picture and then they say, I took this picture of you, if that's okay? All those people said that was fine. Some people said, as long as they're not taking pictures of my children, some people said, as long as they don't seem creepy, which I was like, what's creepy? Like, what would be your definition? And they all said that the creepiness was like separated from the camera. Like it'd be a person with a creepy vibe that also had a camera. Um, some people said that the camera itself changed how they felt. If it was just a phone, they were creepy. If it was a professional, if it was a real camera, then they felt like that person was just a photographer and they were engaging in some art. So there were like all these fine lines, like don't take pictures of my children, be using a real camera, like don't be creepy. And it's definitely all existing in this gray area, but I would say like nine out of 10 people said they were fine with it. They put conditions on it. Like yeah. they'd be fine with it if they had consent, if it wasn't of their children, if they weren't a creep. Yeah. Right. And I do think laws should follow human values and people are saying their values. They don't want unconditional photography of anybody in public places and that's what we have today they don't want that most people seem okay with the general idea though okay i feel like we disagree on some things like you're saying ban street photography but then you're giving all these conditions and i'm saying i'm okay with street photography and giving all these conditions i feel like we mostly agree actually yeah i it it does seem like we agree but we still disagree i'm saying it should be illegal to take pictures of people in public places where the person is the subject of the photo and it's not a newsworthy event. Such as, and I do feel like we have some expectation of privacy even in public places, especially where street photography is most prevalent, like New York City. People really do wander down the street in their bathrobe to grab a paper. Maybe reconsider that. <laughs> But I think you should have the expectation that, okay, you'll see your friends and your neighbors, but it won't be captured permanently and distributed forever. You people can see you, but it doesn't have to become a permanent part of the worldwide record. And if it does, then you should be able to say, yes, I'm okay with that. That's all I'm saying is to get that consent. Did you find any examples of candid photos of people where they were really upset by it that wasn't like an upskirt or them being assaulted or something? I did look for it, but I didn't find anything of that lower degree because there's such a large amount of serious crimes being committed under the guise of street photography. Yeah. But I, I can give you an example right here. I took a picture of street photography myself of a security guard standing next to a piece of art and she stopped me and made me delete it. She was instantly very uncomfortable with it and I feel bad because I made her uncomfortable with that. So there's one example. Yeah, but you just deleted it and nothing happened. Yeah, but I didn't have to legally delete it. And here's where we're talking about ethics versus, versus laws. Like, I'm a considerate person, I'm an ethical person, so of course I deleted it, but other people would not have. And would it be their legal right to retain that picture, to publish it, to uh, make money off of it as a piece of fine art? What if we go on vacation and you're taking a picture of this beautiful street and we want to share it, and a guy 20 feet away that you didn't even see says, hey, I don't want you taking that picture. I'm in it. Erase it. Well, Then my... you go to take another picture and another person says, nope, I'm definitely in that one. Delete it. I don't want to be in it. Okay. You're doing like uh, throwing out the baby with the bathwater thing. I am saying... You're throwing out the baby with the bathwater. You should not... You can you take pictures that have people incidentally in them. That should not be where how much you draw of the, the line. How much of the image the can The person take should up? be the primary subject of the photo. And this is difficult, but law often exists in gray areas. And it would be a civil type of case where somebody would see themselves in a photo, they would be the primary subject of it, or 
debatably not, and they would have to take them to court, and the court system would have to say, okay, this person was the primary subject, or they were incidentally in the background, they were not a key part of the photo, and thus the case could be dismissed. But you're right, there is a lot of gray area, and that fine line in the U.S. court system would get established over multiple different cases as it's being tested. But that's already what's happening. Someone took an upskirt photo and the person complained. It's already going to court. Yeah, but they decided it was legal. That's the problem, is everything is falling under the First Amendment, the right to free speech, where in public spaces you can just take pictures of anything, and I think that's wrong. I think we need to adjust that amendment. So couldn't we... Or change the definition of privacy. Or just tweak it or change the definition of photography in public spaces, because if you're following someone or trying to get pictures of their private parts, I mean, that's very different. I don't know why that would be dismissed or protected. Because changing the First Amendment is like a really big deal. It's hard to change the First Amendment, and no, so far nobody has managed to do it, but I, I think it's worth doing. Tony, you don't love our country. <laughs> Okay, so what should be legal and illegal? I agree with you on things like upskirting, following, like taking creepy pictures. Um, I think if someone asks you to delete something, you should have to. I mean, that just seems right. You should legally have to, okay. I mean, I actually think we almost completely agree on this. Yes, and I think but, uh, I've pulled you into my realm where no. laws need to change. No. You're saying laws need to change. I just like disagreeing with you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to proclaim myself the winner. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what you guys think about this. I know it's very difficult to change people's minds. We have a long history of street photography, and we've shown the value of street photography. I've done street photography, and I appreciate it, but it's 2020. We no longer need randos with cameras taking pictures of people without their consent in order to document it for historical purposes. We have a ton of that, and I think we should adjust the laws to increase the expectation that people have in public spaces so they can go to work, so they can go to school without worrying about somebody taking their picture without any consent. I want to hear what you think because I know you're real photographers and you care about documentation and you know that some random person with a camera cannot capture our history and our culture and our humanity through the artistic eyes of a true photographer. We shouldn't throw away our whole art form just because Tony's afraid someone's going to take a picture of his skirt. We can't do that. We can't appeal to all the Tonys in the world. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid my website is going to go down when it's most important. I'm afraid my social media isn't enough and I need my own personalized website. That's why I went to squarespace.com slash Tony and set up a beautiful website, multiple different websites for different parts of my business and my online experience. You should try that too. Make a beautiful website, free trial, no credit card required. If you love it, use the coupon code TONY to get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace.